second chapter, and we're going to begin with the 21st verse of the second chapter of St. James. And read a, a portion of it. The 21st verse of the second chapter. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? See thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works faith was made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of of God. Now, my subject tonight, and hold your Bibles now because I've got several scriptures written down here. We don't get too long. I'll refer to many of them. My subject is works is faith expressed. Now remember, works is faith expressed. Works show that faith has already took a hold. Now, we choose this because we, I believe that it might help us to understand. Now, listen real close, and we'll go into it like a Sunday school lesson. Here, James is expressing in his teaching from Genesis 22, 1 and 9, what man seen in Abraham. Let's just go back. I've got the scriptures kind of marked out here. In Genesis um, 22nd chapter, and the uh, first to the... Ninth verse. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land, Mark, and offer him for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. See, he didn't even tell him which one it was. You just go ahead. When God speaks, you go on moving. See? And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled an ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place which God had told him of, told him. And on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place far off. And Abraham said unto the young man, Abide ye here. With the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Now he had in his mind, now he's going up to kill his son. Because God told him to, but look at the scripture here. I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again unto you. He and the lad. And Abraham took the wood and the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and the knife, and they both went them together. And Isaac spake to Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. So they went both of them together, and they came to the place which God told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound his son, Isaac his son, and laid him upon the altar, upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thine son from me, the only son from me. What a work. Now, we find here that James is justifying Abraham by his works. But now in Paul, in Romans, uh, the book of Romans, the eighth, the fourth chapter, for one to eight, I won't read it all, but just read part of it. And what shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, is found? For if Abraham was justified, you remember we talked the word last night, justified, by works he has were all to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness' sake, 
And to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. Now, now what Paul is referring to here is what God's seen in Abraham. Now, that's, if, we, if we, it's not turning too much, we go back again to Genesis, the 15th chapter, and the 6th verse. 15, 6, I believe is right. We're going to the 5th. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now towards the heavens and tell the stars if thou art able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Now, the two men that were talking on faith, Paul justified Abraham by what God saw in Abraham. But James justified Abraham by what man saw in, in Abraham. See, now, uh, James said he's justified by his works. Paul said he's justified by faith. But see, Abraham believed God. That's what God saw in him. He believed it. But then when he went to acting as though it was already done, that's what man saw in him. And that's the same as it is to us. Because our works express what faith we have. But if we're afraid to act on what we believe, then we do not believe it. We've got to believe it. Abraham's works was expressing his faith he had in God's promise. Now, Abraham, remember, he was 90 years old or 100 years old. And Sarah was 90 years old. And now they were well stricken in age. Past childbearing had uh, been for many, many years. And they lived together as husband and wife since they were young. And no children, but yet God told him when he was 75 years old and Sarah 65... You're going to have a baby. And he believed God's promise. He believed it. Now, see, he made ready everything for this baby. See, that's what God saw when he believed God. And man saw what he did to express what he believed. And that's the same thing it works tonight. The same way it is with us. It has been revealed to him. See, it has been revealed to him. So he believed it so and was acting as though it had already took place. Now, let's just stop there just a minute. Sometimes we misunderstand this. People get emotion and they try to work on emotion. That won't work. Now, I'm like Brother Hereholzer here. We're, we're old man and we've been in this a long time and we've seen the pros and cons and, and everything and praying for the sick around the world and seeing the the disappointments of people and seeing the, the uh, hallelujahs from every side, then all this we learn by. Now, when the boys, when we started preaching this, Brother Harold, sir, like they started to swim. The first thing, you know, it used to be that I'd get out and I would, um, Brother Jack, I've had Brother Brown to walk me on the street night after night to try to get myself around to myself. I'd stand there like a little kid splashing the water, seeing visions, you know, and I'd just stay there to Brother Brown. I remember one night, I never will forget it, up in San Jose or somewhere. He come to wake me up. I hadn't slept for several days. And I didn't know I was talking to the man, but said, I told him, start crying, said, I'm going home. See? Well, I said, you can't go home. There's a meeting going on down there. I said, well, I'll be ready in a few minutes to go home. See, just beyond, beside myself almost. See, I was a boy then. Like you're learning to swim. You know, you splash the water, go across the pool, and <laughs> well, I made her. Now, if you learn to swim, more graceful is the stroke, and it don't wear you out so much. See? That's it. You'll learn how to do it. And cut every corner and make it better and at more of an ease. See? A little boy that never walked would try to walk down this aisle here. He'd fall down a dozen times and be wore out before he got there. But anyone who knows how to walk, an athlete, will walk right down that aisle and never even notice doing it. Well, he had that to start with. That's what he is now. Well, that's the same way with preaching, divine healing, or anything else. As you go along, you begin to learn. If you don't learn, there's something wrong. You've got to learn. And you've got to learn how to accept God and what it really means. We allow it sometimes to say, well, this guy didn't have enough faith. This guy didn't do this and this. There's a reason there for that. There's a reason. Sometimes it's unconfessed sin. 
You could pour a gallon of oil on a person and scream till you got hoarse. It would never move that devil. No, sir. You've got to confess that. That's what discernment does. Say, go make that right. Bring that out. But it's so slow doing that, you see. And then the rest of them get impatient. And they say, oh, I never got prayed for. But we want to find a way now that what takes place, the real basic of divine healing. Now, a gift, just like I said last night, a gift is wonderful, but you can't base your eternal destination on gifts. You cannot major on a minor. And a, a gift is a minor. And Satan can impersonate any gift God's got. He can make something just exactly like it. See? It's exactly. Therefore, we've got to watch that. Like sometimes I express about shouting. I've seen demons shout. Speak in tongues. I've seen demons speak in tongues. Sure. He impersonates it. It isn't a genuine, but it impersonates it, you see. Makes it look like it's real. And people sometimes who don't know the difference declare this to be real when it isn't real. And the same thing they do by divine healing. They think, well, it's a hocus pocus or something like that. It isn't. It's a genuine, unadulterated faith in what God said to be the truth. And that anchors. And when it anchors, there's nothing going to move it. It's going to stay there. And therefore, cutting these corners. Now, faith is a revelation from God. Now, faith is a revelation. Now, that's where I want to stay there just a moment. It's a revelation. He has revealed it to you by His grace. It's nothing you did. You didn't work yourself up into faith. You ever have faith that's given to you by the grace of God. And God reveals it to you. Therefore, faith is a revelation. And the whole church of God is built upon the revelation. A Baptist minister told me not long ago, he said, I just can't accept revelation. I said, then you cannot accept the Bible. You cannot accept Christ because He is the revelation of God. He's God revealed in flesh. Therefore, the whole church is built upon divine revelation. Jesus said to, uh, I believe it was Peter, said, uh, He said, Who does man say I, the Son of Man, am? He's talking to His disciples. And some said, You're Elias and Moses or one of the prophets of Jeremiah. He said, But who do you say? He said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, the Roman Catholic Church says he was speaking to Peter. Upon this rock, I'll build my church. The Protestants said he's building it up on himself. Now, they could be right. But to me, both of them's wrong. It was upon the spiritual revelation of who he was. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, Peter. But my Father, which is in heaven, has revealed this to you. And upon this rock, the revelation of who he is. Upon the revelation, he is the word in the whole. Upon this rock, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. It showed the gates of hell would be against it. Able by faith, revelation, no Bible written in those days, by able by faith offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than that which came, which God testified he was righteous. How? By faith, how? By revelation. By revelation, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice because it was revealed to him that it wasn't fruits of the field. It was the blood. That's why some people can believe it and some can't believe it. Some try to make believe it. In an audience of people where a prayer line comes to, you'll find some, and they're all good people, we'll say there's some that's trying hard to believe it, trying to work themselves into it, some just can't do it at all, and others, it just by grace, it's just given to them. Now, there is the difference. See? That does it. That's the real revelation, because faith is a revelation from God. It must be revealed first. Jesus clearly expressed this when he said, No man can come to me except my Father draws him first, or reveals me to him first. You ought to read that. It's St. James or St. John six forty four into forty six. They didn't know who he was. They thought he's just an ordinary man. They thought him just to be, as people does today, some prophet. He was a prophet. He was an ordinary man. But there was more than that. It's like last night speaking, when you get the book, you're going to see maybe a little confusion there of what I said, the two books of life. It's the same book. But one of them is your natural birth. 
The other one is your spiritual birth. One leads out to the other, and it's like a stalk of wheat. Well, now you talk of me, you talk of me as a living person. But there's a part of me here is that person that must perish. That's the book that the name comes off of. But the eternal one, the predestinated one, the elected one, the name never can come from that because it was always on it. It can never be taken off. You'll notice it in the book, so to save your confusion. You'll find it that way because I think Brother Vale, who put the right grammar to it, uh, reminded me of it today. I said, that's right. The Baptists believe there's two separate books. And in one way it is two separate books, and in another way it isn't two separate books. I'm two separate people. I'm body and soul and spirit. Three separate people, but I'm only one makes me as a being. There's only a real one book of life. Like there was one germ of, of the wheat that come up through the stalk and went through the toss and out through the husk and into the wheat. All the way along, that you say, that, that's a wheat laying there. It isn't the wheat, it's the stalk, but together it's the wheat. See? It's the wheat because it's all one stalk, but the wheat is what you're talking about, the grain at the end of it. If the other was a carrier, it must perish. That's the one, one place sounds like you can have your name taken off the Lamb's Book of Life. Another place, you can't do it. So that's where it is. It's all in that great revelation there, which was made known during the time of the seven seals. Why, why some people can't believe it? Jesus said that no man can come to me except my Father draws him first. And all that the Father has given me will come to me. No man can understand who he is or how it is except to be revealed to you by the revelation of God and then faith in that you act accordingly. See? Here we see plainly that God is revealed in Jesus and only those who were foreordained to see it will see it. Be sure to read this scripture. I omitted it then. That's St. John six forty four to 46. I omitted it because I thought maybe we'd uh, have a maybe a, not enough time to go through because that clock up there just keeps moving. And so we, uh, you notice, no man, no man can come except my Father draws him first. And all the Father has given me, they will come. They'll recognize it. No other man can do it. No other person, no matter how good who you are, it's got to be revealed to you. Then you see who Jesus Christ is. Now, here, predestinated plan is in plain view. Just as other seed, the Word of God is a seed and must have the ground prepared beforehand. If you sowed seed, just throw it out there on the ground, it would do no good. The birds would pick it up. If you throw it among thistles and thorns, it will choke it out pretty soon. Jesus' parable says so. So the ground has to be made ready first. So God, in sovereign grace, prepares the heart first. He prepared you before the foundation of the world to receive Him in this age. He foreknew you by His foreknowledge and ordained you to eternal life. Amen. Knew you. Therefore, He prepared you. That's why you staggered out of these things and staggered into what you have now. It was God leading you. To the place where he had ordained for you to be. It, or it, if it, this ground isn't prepared beforehand, it can't grow. That's the reason the seed of faith, when you're preaching faith, see the discernments of the Lord and see what takes place and all the gifts of the Bible working. People work themselves up. Oh, hallelujah, I believe it. They come up and find themselves disappointed. See? The ground has to be foreordained. And you know when it strikes it. Like my little eagle last night. He knew when he heard that scream of that mother eagle, there's a lot different between that and the cluck of the hen. Amen. Because he was an eagle from the egg. Yeah. Not he wasn't made an eagle right then, he always was an eagle. Amen. And a Christian always was. Amen. That's the reason the divorce, when you divorce because you were trapped into it. See? By your first parent, Adam and Eve. You become a sinner by nature. You didn't want to be. But now you heard the gospel and faith cometh by hearing. Revelation comes by hearing. There is a little something inside of you. Another man sat right by you and said, Oh, I don't believe that stuff. Nonsense. I don't believe that. 
Nothing to that. Like the day on the day of Pentecost. The life said, these men are full of new wine. Oh, it was, it was a great thing to those it was happening to. Why? It was God revealing Himself to the individuals. While others laughed, these were rejoicing. It was an individual revelation, which is faith. Faith, it's revealed. If it wasn't faith, then it wouldn't even be there. It was faith. Just seeds has to have the ground prepared first. Therefore, all he foreknew, he called. All he called, all he foreknew, he predestinated. If you want to read that, Romans 8, uh, 28, 34, and also Ephesians 1, 1 to 5. See? All he foreknew, he did call. All he called, he justified. And all he justified, he has already glorified. There's nothing out of order. We think there is. But look in the Scriptures. It's just kidding exactly the way God's Word said it would. We see the messages rejected today. Isn't that just what the Scriptures said they would do? Sure. All these things are ordained of God. Oh, it should make you walk happy. That's the trouble with we today. So much different from the Christians of old. When the real, true revelation of Jesus Christ being Emmanuel dwelt in the hearts of those men, they were rugged people. But today we're padded by denominations. Of, oh, I tell you, they ain't got the revelation. You come over here. You're depending on their revelation. If their revelation isn't according to the Word of God, then it's wrong. Mine or anybody else's. That's where the showdown comes. The Word of God tells which is right and wrong. And you see, that's to have its ground, of course. Therefore, all he foreknew. See, he already knew what was going to happen. Notice Jesus said again about the seed. Some fell on rocks, others in mixed grounds. See, over where his thorns, thistles, and everything else, he couldn't grow. And others on good ground, good ground, good soil, which had been prepared. Already prepared. All the man out here, he's like the chicken. He's looking along, trying to find. He hits into this and he hits into that. But after a while, there comes a sudden scream from heaven. He recognizes it right quick. That's the word of God. See, he knows it because there's something in his heart that's been told to him, revealed to him about it. 